Hello. Today I'm out looking for a gibbet. I'm out in the countryside in Sussex, very close to Arundel, and I'm looking for the place where Jack Upperton, a labourer of 60, who tried his hand at becoming a highwayman and failed. Right, well, um, there's a public bridleway here, but that's not actually the one I want. I have looked at the map and I have been here actually some time ago, about 10 years ago, I came looking for Jack Upperton's uh, gibbet post. There's another one here and that's what we, we want. And there's a signage here telling me about a missing cat by the looks of things. Have you seen, have you seen Alba or Albert or Algernon? I haven't seen any of them. So I'm going to take this stroll down here. We're coming on to, I think this is called the Angmering Estate. It is a public footpath, although there's a sign just up ahead here that says no access to Lee Farm, private drive, liable to be closed at times, it says. Well, let's hope that's not one of these times. This route that I'm taking, this is an unmetalled road, a little, it's got a bit of tarmac on it. Um, I've driven up on a route that was very narrow and windy up in the Sussex countryside over the Downs. But this route originally uh, was called the, the King's Road. The King's Road because our story is in 1770 and 1771. But a hundred years before that, or to be honest, 120 years before that, um, in 1651, King Charles, or rather Charles II, after his father, I think, was beheaded in London at the uh, sort of end of the English Civil War, Charles was a wanted man, Charles II, that is, and he fled from Worcester, the Battle of Worcester, down down the country south and made his way to Shoreham where he got a boat to France where he was in exile for a while until 1660. In between then the parliamentarians were in power, Oliver Cromwell and all of that. Um, but so the road in the period that I'm looking at in 1770 when Jack Upperton, our protagonist, not so much a hero, but our protagonist was stalking along this route. It was the King's Road. It's better known these days as the Monarch's Way, a footpath that sort of traces Charles II's route. And that's what I'm interested in just having a little gander at today. So, what of our story today? What of our walk? Well, Jack Upperton was a labourer. He seems to be a, a slightly out of work labourer. He was about 60 in 1770. Uh, I read a report that um, he was a victim of the Enclosures Act. So he may have had certain land or he may have had certain work that was taken away from him. So. He seemed to be somebody who was pretty desperate, I think. And at 60 in 1770, pretty elderly as well. And desperate to try and find some form of money, no doubt. And he had a scheme. He had an idea. He was going to hold up the mail coach. Well, I say mail coach, it wouldn't have been a coach. It was uh, really the postman, if you like. This is the route between Arundel which is behind me, and then in front of me, if I carry on, would be Stenning. How many miles is that? It's about 12 miles, I suppose. Something like that, 12 to 15 miles, maybe less. Stenning was a port, an important port. Arundel had its castle and was a, a center of administration. There would have been posts coming along here regularly Jack Upperton lived fairly local to this area 
and he figured, wouldn't it be great to just, um, I'm sorry, I'm just, uh, I'm just looking to see. It may be that we go down here. I have a feeling that it is. It's a, it's a little narrow little pathway. Let's see if we can find the, the gibbet point. So this is a bit more like it would have been like. It's uh, pretty dark, pretty spooky, pretty lonely. And if you're the postman trotting along, aiming along on your, on your horse with important papers, this is pretty much, I imagine, what it would have been like. Down here, another little sort of gully that, that leads down. Let's, um, let's have a little gander down here. It's a bit slippery and wet. And we're in August. So Jack Upperton with his mate decides this is where he's going to go. He's going to hold out and wait for William Baldry, who was the, the man responsible with the Royal Mail, or at least with the mail. And, well, it's not down here. <laughs> so there he was lying in wait, thinking, They'll be along in a minute, or he'll be along, William Baldry will be along, and he overpowers him. I'm going back up the hill now. He overpowers him. Not quite sure whether he knocks him out, whether he stands there with a gun in the traditional highwayman fashion, whether he's got a mask on or whatever, but he manages to get hold of the post bag and really all he makes off with is about a pound in sterling. Now, back then, in 1770, a pound in sterling would have been a fair bit of money. And as a result, let's try down here. As a result, he would have been living pretty wealthy, pretty well off for a while anyway. And in fact, people had noticed that he was suddenly had come into some funds which if you're in a labour in the middle of Sussex in a sort of farming community, that would have been a bit unusual. So people were a bit suspicious. They would have heard of the attack and put one and one together and made two. Well, it's not down here either. Oh dear, <laughs> I have been here before. I know it's sort of tucked away, it's just off. These woods actually, I mentioned that it would have been a bit like that. In some passes, places it would have been a bit like that. But actually here, this was pretty open downland back in 1770. So it's not here. Let's, uh, let's go back. So, yeah, so uh, he may have been, um, it may have, he may have been a suspect for this. But actually, William Baldry recognized him. He knew who he was. He reported it to the authorities and the authorities came, arrested Jack Upperton. They took him to East Grinstead where he was tried at the Assizes in 1771. He was then found guilty and hanged. As this was a heinous crime, a crime against the mail, an important thing on the King's Road, it was deemed that he would be gibbeted and made an example of. Now gibbeting meant hanging yourself, not hanging yourself, you were hung. He was hung in Horsham, I think. And then he was carried here, his dead body covered in tar, smothered in tar so that his body would not um, to bits and um, decompose too quickly. I think it may be down here. So uh, they say that his body took two years to decompose. I'm pretty certain this is where it was. But can I find the post? Uh, no, I can't. It just popped out back onto the main, the main road, which is the Monarch's Way, as I explained before, the King's Highway. It, um, it now goes through this uh, rather lovely uh, forestry, it's type of like a forestry commission, but it's uh, Arundel, it's um, Angmering Estate. And uh, you can come here and, and have lovely walks. Only it's a bit windy today, so I'm going to duck down here. Um, I'm pretty certain it's somewhere around here where let's have, a, let's have a gander down here a moment. 
So let me just continue with the with the story. Jack Upper Upperton. Yes, yeah, the Angmering Park Estate. There we go. Walking place only, strictly no vehicles. It's, it is rather beautiful. Oh, wait a minute. I think it's over there. Yes. So after after his uh, after the after the assizes after the um, I wonder if we can get through here after the the court case and everything he was hung in Horsham his body was dragged out here though the reason for doing that is a it was local to the crime that was important he was put in tar and then gibbeted meant that he was hung in a cage in a sort of hooped an iron hooped cage which was human shape so. It meant that the relations particularly couldn't get him down. Of course, that would have been an offence to take him down, but it meant that the relations couldn't claim the body and give him a proper burial or something. Um, covered in tar, preserved the body for as long as possible. And they say, it, they say it lasted up to two years like this. I'm not sure that that was really true. Ah, here we go. Here it is. I'll stand here and you can see marked quite clearly is the the post with the gibbet sign and it looks as if it says 1774 that is a misnomer actually it says 1771 and a small cross has been placed at the end of the date so that it looks like 1774 that wasn't deliberate that was just as it came out I believe that that was put here in the in the 1980s something like that and I'm told it's a di by a direct descendant um, of Jack Upperton. So that's quite interesting. So this is the spot. Here he would have hung. It would not, it would have been denuded of trees back then, as I say, open downland, and it meant that people riding along the King's Way would have seen this. They would have known that this was not tolerated, that bad deeds would be punishable by death and exhibited in such a public way. And that was important. It was the deterrent of the time. People were um, pretty ignorant and they were illiterate. They couldn't read newspapers on the whole. And so you needed to do something relatively dramatic. And I think that that was dramatic to ha hang a body on a gibbet and say, you do wrong. This is what will happen to you. And that seems to be seems to be the case. Well, I'm glad I found it anyway. Well, I've enjoyed my little exploration here in the Angmering estate looking for J Jack Upperton's gibbet post. They say that the gibbet post remained there for several years and then was replaced over the years marking the spot and I think it's great that these sort of things are commemorated even if it is commemorating the grisly attack of a, a citizen, a postman and um, the hanging of a man for a, quite a simple crime really of stealing a pound but that's our history and Britain and England and this whole nation is steeped in wonderful history and I want to explore more of our heritage and our history and I hope that you will join me support me as I do just this if you've enjoyed the video then do give me a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe click the bell notification that's very important then that way you won't miss out You'll be notified every time I upload a new video. I try to do them as regularly as I can. And do write a comment on. If there's places you'd like me to go and visit, then I'd be interested in that too. I'm based down in Sussex, so until I uh, am able to get out and about further afield, but I'm always interested. Seems pretty deserted, but as it was a windy day, I thought this was the best place to go. Well, thank you very much, and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now. How do we, how do we get back?